Hello, my name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here to quickly talk to you a little bit about what's going on with Zephyr these days. Um, Zephyr is basically uh, continuing to gain in popularity, and we are going more this year in and focusing on how we can start to get our safety story pulled together. I'll be giving a talk later tomorrow. Kate, at the oh, embedded world right embedded here. World right now, yeah. I'm in here in the embedded world right now. And I'll be giving a talk tomorrow about what we're doing with safety in Zephyr. Because um, we want to take open source, we want to get open source ready to be used in some of these safety applications. So what's the adoption? What's the popularity? How is it going with Zephyr in the recent uh, months? Well, um, every month I pretty much go on to GitHub and I look at what the stats are on GitHub. I figure they're neutral, it's no one's biases. Um, and so I go and look at, see, what are we doing with each of the projects? Um, and I'm taking to look and see how many total contributors have happened overall. Um, for Zephyr itself, we've been pretty much gaining about 10 to 15 contributors each month, new contributors each month. But then we also look at the total commits, and then what are the commits like in the last month? And the, these stats were taken yesterday from GitHub, and in the last month, we're pretty much sitting at um, 1,200 commits into the repo. And these are features. This is new, new, new um, capabilities that are getting added. Not just bug fixes. Not fixes. just bug fixes, yeah. Um, and and this, these are all the RTOSs, the ma major ones? These are all the major RTOSs I've been tra you know, you know, translating. Some of them have been grayed out because they haven't been really active because they've moved to another repo or something like that. But I just keep them here so that we have a consistent picture of what's happening over time. But as you can sort of see, Zephyr is about three to four times more commits happening. It's got the most number of contributors of all these R tosses that we can detect. They're upstreaming things. I think a lot of people are using it in other places, and all these are being used. But the ones who are upstreaming and participating in the community, we have them probably the largest number. So um, the adoption is. Uh, in terms of uh, development, there's a lot. There's a lot of good developers, of, yep. Because it's new also, right? It's new, it's in a clean, very clean code base, and it's very easy for people who've been in the embedded Linux space to sort of switch over to using it. We've tried to follow a lot of the good practices, and we've come up with a few of our own um, best practices with Zephyr. Why is uh, uh, the Linux Foundation uh, doing th Zephyr? this? Well. We, one of the things we recognized is Linux, a lot of people were trying to get Linux very small, but Linux doesn't go long to Meg. However, if we want to have you know, sensors and devices collecting data and communicating up to the cloud, we need to have some place where um, it's going to fit like between you know, 8K, 512K, that type of space. So getting things such that they can fit into that space and then still have enough policies such that when it's important, you can do the security, and when it's important, you can also potentially look at safety certifying it. That's what was missing. So Linux is a big success, let's yeah. say, right? That's and pretty, we've been taking lessons from it. <laughs> it's yeah. all, over the, all over the place. It's yes. like the, the whole world is based on Linux, like well, about everything. Six, uh, and yes, I have, you could say that everything is except on the embedded side. In the embedded side, the last stat I knew, about 62% of the systems were Linux-based. But that still is a good margin for a whole bunch of things that were actually, three or four years ago, very fragmented, as you can see. So there's a lot of Linux in the embedded world. A lot, a lot of Linux. But it's mostly Cortex-A devices, it's big, it, yeah, bigger it's, devices. And it's for things that are plugged in and wired. Zephyr's designed for things that have to be low power for long periods of time. And so that um, helps it move forward. And from that chart, I've been tagging it for about 18 months. And as you can see, people are starting to get the message. We're seeing more commits go in. And if you just take and highlight down to a couple key ones, you can sort of see that we've got multiple commits going in and um, not squashing the commits and the transparency. So we're sort of intercepting there. Oops, go for it. Uh, and, uh so th something is happening here. Zephyr is the pink one. Yes, Zephyr uh, is and the you're standard. overtaking something. The what well, is, so we, what? we basically this is Zephyr's line here, and um, you know the top contributors. So these are the developers that are committing upstream that are visible and can be detected. And you know we've got a variety of other um, OSs, and they have the contributors. And you know, I think anything that's pretty much over 100 contributors is you know, a reasonably good project. But what you can see from Zephyr is we're getting a lot of people that are very interested in it and are contributing. And the fact that we've got contributions is really key for a community. Uh, 
but contribution doesn't mean adoption necessarily. No, contribution doesn't mean adoption, um, but we are seeing that these contributors are doing things. They're cloning it. So part of my challenge here at Embedded World is figuring out, okay, are there products that have Zephyr in them? We've identified some already, but there's more to be identified, definitely. Um, if you take a look at the traffic on Zephyr's website, we're seeing pretty close to 300 plus clones a day happening, unique people cloning. And over a two week period, there's over a thousand people uniquely cloning Zephyr. They're not doing it as a hobby completely, they're making products. Um, a couple years ago, I found my first product here at Embedded World, uh, Pro Glove. has a smart glove where they have a barcode reader on the glove and uh, they've used Zephyr pretty much from the start. And they initially didn't contribute anything upstream, but then someone who's contributed something upstream that they didn't like, and suddenly they started becoming very active to make their life easier. So it's a good thing for open source. Uh, when you have the, the list of all these uh, systems right here, are they all open source? These all have their sources available up on GitHub. Uh, and, but uh, and open, it's yeah. not possible to see like on AWS or somewhere Who's using what exactly and know exactly what the statistic, statistics yeah, are? So AWS um, has the same sorts of stats as Zephyr does here on GitHub in the sense that you can see who's actually developing and upstreaming it. But we can't see who's actually using it. Um, that is part of that sort of um, embedded devices don't necessarily have monitors. They don't have they don't, to advertise. They don't give an ID? They don't, have to, they don't have to say what OS they're running because you can't see it. There's no screens on some of them. Some of them have screens, but some, a lot of them don't. And so it's, some, it's, it's not always very clear what's actually there. Uh, but uh, so how do people figure it out? Like uh, you need uh, to analyze walking, the whole industry. Uh, walking around in detective work is the only way I've got, but I would really appreciate it if anyone's using Zephyr in products, if they could reach out to me and let us know, we'll happily make it visible. Um, some of the prod... Ducks I know about right now. Uh, there's some development boards that are shipping with Zephyr. Sorry. But these are the products I know today, mostly through uh, walking around and talking to people that I know are running Zephyr. And so this was a pro glove that we found about. This was a smart watch. These are, uh, this one sits on a garbage truck. It gets soldered on by welding onto the side of a garbage truck, and every time the garbage truck tilts, it, it sends where it is, so that um, the garbage trucks only dump in the landfills that they're supposed to. But it's a lot. Of, there's a lot of really innovative, low-power, long-life solutions that we're starting to see Zephyr emerge into. And if people have other ones that they're aware of, uh, I'd certainly like to know. And so the Linux Foundation uh, has experience with Linux and running it in a nice, uh, helping to do yeah. a whole bunch of yeah, stuff around so, it. Right. And so all this stuff that you've learned on the Linux, you're applying it on the Zephyr? Yes, we've been trying to apply a lot of the lessons learned. Um, Zephyr's using K um, basically the kconfig, and it's also using device tree, which are very familiar to most embedded Linux developers. And it tends to work with a very straightforward um, structure for the code. So most Linux developers will feel pretty comfortable going into uh, the Zephyr ecosystem. We've got lots of examples, lots of documentation, um, mostly written to make it easier. It's using the same tool chains that you used to see in Linux. Are you ha do you have statistics on how much fun they're having? Um, is well, is it a fun ecosystem to work in? Yes, it's a fun ecosystem to work in. Um, we're seeing new people showing up all the time, which is exciting. And we also have people that are willing to volunteer to be ambassadors for the project, holding meetups, doing these types of activities. And we can see the, the contributors. You have uh, the top contributors, like a cake showing. So every month the top contributors are, if you go to GitHub, you can pretty much see where the top contributors are across the entire ecosystem. Um, and this is over the entire history of the project. And so you see a lot of um, our TSC members, as well as, you know, who's there and visibly contributing in. But we actually have a lot of community as well as member companies participating now. And can we see, like, the, the, you, you have a cake and presentation about the different companies? Yeah, sure. Just a second. Let me just go back to that then. So, uh, so this presentation is going to be the one you show here at Admitted World? Yeah, this is part of what I'm 
talking to people. So when we started with Zephyr, um, there was about 80 authors we could identify. Yeah. Um, and now there's over 600, which you've just seen from the commits. When we started, there's over two, about 2,000 commits in the repo when we started the project, and now we're over 3,700. And so and the so, green one right here is Intel. Yeah, this is Intel. So it's the biggest one. Right, and when we started the project, it was, you know, definitely Intel and Wind River were the dominant. But over time, we've been seeing more and more diversity happening in the project. And so we have Nordic, Lenaro, and uh, Oticon, uh, which is, actually makes hearing aids. Um, and so we're actually getting a fairly large set of companies that are actively looking and participating. So the, the second project. biggest one is Nordic Semiconductor. Yep. They're doing a lot of the ARM-based chips that are being used. Right. Uh, the, the lilac one right here is Linaro. So Linaro yep. is uh, big in Zephyr. Yes. Doing a lot of the work. Linaro is doing a lot of helping get the ARM ecosystem working with Zephyr. And, and then there's an unknown. Oh yeah, like the kernel. We have community. We have community participating that we don't know where their companies are working for because they are coming in through Gmail or neutral IDs. And then it says... Uh, Oricon, NXP, and Foundries IO. Yep, Foundries. ST Microelectronics. Yep. Um, so, is, so it's definitely got lots of uh, adoption happening right now, or lots yeah. of uh, com commits it's happening. Got, it's got lots of um, commits. It's commits I can track. Um, adopt, and we're seeing more cases where people are asking the vendors for Zephyr ports before they'll start to, uh, you know, get the silicon. And so by being there with Zephyr ports on the silicon, um, it makes an easier path for adoption into products. But that sort of thing tends to happen under NDAs between the silicon vendors and their customers. Nordic has been very good about um, sharing a few of the ones that have made products with us, and they've done their products off of Zephyr. Um, things these sorts of things are you know, emerging over time, basically. So what, what's next? Um, and what's happening here, this show, this, this news here for Zephyr, right? Well, so I think with Zephyr, we are... Um, the big news for Zephyr, unfortunately they're not at the show right now with us, but is that um, Adafruit has now joined Zephyr as a member. And so they're starting to engage and work with us. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing their contributions since they know how to reach a large range of customers that we have not been in up till now. And making things approachable and useful for people um, in certain spaces. So we're looking forward to Zephyr. I think Seed also has some. So as we can build up the ecosystem for Zephyr, hopefully it's more and more people are participating, continue to participate over time. So Adafruit is a lot to do with the uh, ecosystem development and uh, ecosystem development community. and community, and they they do a lot of things with MicroPython, well, actually CircuitPython, and then they're um, looking at trying to use some of the stuff code that we've got in Zephyr to help build up their stories too, and enable lots of new startups and stuff, right? Yeah. Isn't it the idea that you want to get new? Well, new got, stuff. Yeah, new we, cool we like to get new things. And it's, it's the challenge though is finding them. Um, when you go to CES, it's going out on the innovation floor and going around and walking and trying to figure out, okay, you know, have you been using Zephyr or not? Was one of the things I was doing in January. So, like I say, the challenge right now is figuring out where the products are because we know they're out there. We know developers are doing things for a reason. And we hear the Fitech booth, and uh, we were filming the Zephyr demo just over there. Um, there is. Uh, lots of lots of news about uh, lots of development and uh, updates, p providing updates, secure yep. updates, security. Yep. So Zephyr is um, about to come out with its next release of the 2.2 release. We expect it probably maybe the end of the week, maybe next week. Uh, it's one of the qualities up there. The Zephyr project itself, though, right from the start, has been very much focused on safety and security. And we have a security team that's actively working to uh, fix vulnerabilities as we learn about them and put those changes into our LTS. So we have an LTS and we regularly update it as well. The Zephyr um, community is, is very active, as you can see from the commit rate. That turns into about like one commit per hour. Um, for contrast, the Linux kernel is a, a little over nine commits per hour. Um, the Linux kernel though also makes bug fixes and updates at about the rate of one commit per hour. So our upstream development is about the same rate as uh, the Linux kernel's bug fixing at this point. 
but we've got a lot of um, changes and fixes coming in and we, Zephyr you know, is, has a team that's dedicated to for the security and making sure we have all the vulnerabilities remediated. And what other things are next? What's exciting for the future? What's exciting is we're, we're working towards making sure we can get Zephyr to be safety certified. Um, there isn't really many open source projects that have actually taken and gone through safety certification that we've been able to identify. So we're doing a little bit of ground blazing here uh, with figuring out, okay, how can we get the fundamental quality that these standards are requiring and then work with uh, various developers to have use cases that we can actually take through certification and get and work with the certification authorities as well as the regulatory authorities to get Zephyr able to be used in safety critical applications. Is, so for instance, well we, one of the things our TSC cares very much about is fast response time for builds and we have a com common infrastructure so that every um, commit has basically gone through regression and so keeping the response time reasonable is one of the things that we spend a large portion of our budget on. Well, I, I'm the director for the project and I help build, um, you know, help educate people about what's going on in Zephyr and work with the board as well as the TSC to make sure we're aiming in um, things that make sense for the project. So I tend to do a, a bit of the marketing, a little bit of um, where, fill in where I need to. Where the members don't have the skills or something like that, I try to help. And uh, there's stuff happening around the world. There is. It's worldwide right now, yes. We, um, we have pretty much most, com actually, from the traffic to our website in the last year, you can see that we're touching most, com most countries in the world are basically starting to come and look at our website and see what's happening with Zephyr.